Do you look forward to plastering over r -Tech ceilings? A lot of fellas dread it, but I genuinely do enjoy plastering over r -Techs. But I've got a little method, you see. I've got a system that I use every time I plaster an r -Tech ceiling. And in this video, I'm going to share it with you. We're also going to touch on um, understanding r -Techs. A lot of fellas are scared to skim over r -Tech ceilings and they just want to overboard everything because perhaps they've had a ceiling fall down in the past. So we're going to briefly touch on what causes that and how you can sort of gauge if that's going to be an issue or not. And as I always do, I'm going to give you as many little hints and tips through the whole video as I possibly can, just to make it so you really get something from it. So let's get into it. Right, so... Nice little Artex ceiling to do. It's a stipple, it's not very thick, so we just skim straight over this. Now, I'm not worried about this falling down. You get that in situations where there's lime wash paint behind it or distemp paint, uh, if you've ever heard of that. It's not very nice stuff. Basically just lime mixed with water and um, really, really milky and painted on, uh, like a whitewash. And then it dries out, but it leaves it dusty, um, which was great because it would get over anything, you know. But then when people are painted over the top of this stuff, <clears throat> you don't know it's under there and it's very dusty. And then you can plaster and your plaster will stick to the paint, but the paint won't stick to the dust that's underneath it. Now, this was used like in the, you know, the 50s and before. But this house is a 1960s, 1970s build, so... So I know just by looking at the outside of the house, let me show you, look at the house at the back. You can see the age, can you see that? Can you zoom in and see them, yeah? You can see the 1960s, 1970s builds. There's no lime plastering gone on. If there's lime plastering, there's a good chance that there's lime wash paint. These were built after that era ended, so we're not worried about distemper or lime wash under the vortex. So we just skim straight on it, it'd be fine. I mean, you can have a little scrape at it to make sure it's well adhered, but you know, you'll have all the people going off the head about asbestos. If you're really panicking about asbestos, get it tested. If you're just going to skim over it and you're not going to really start disturbing it, then you don't really need to worry about it. I mean, it can kill you. I mean, don't start been messing with it if you can help it, but you can just skim over it and be fine. So we've got, it's only a little baby sealer. We're going to first coat it, and to get rid of the cat pattern, we're going to um, just just flatten it and let it go right off. It's the best way to get over the Artex I've found. Um, to help that speed that process up, we've put a little bit of accelerator in the plaster. So we've used a uh, half time. The recommended dosage to make it exactly half time is to use one sachet per half a bag, but we've just put one sachet for a full bag. So it's not going to be half time. It's going to be more quarter time if you would you know just to speed it up a little bit now on some of my videos when uh, when I've done it like skimming over walls I'll put the wall on first and put the ceiling on later I think loads of people sort of going, ah, 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 you know, you should put the ceiling on first. Well, the thing is, I've been skimming r ceilings and getting over all sorts of crap for years and years. I've just got that good at sort of not dropping anything and keeping the walls immaculate. But now it doesn't really matter to me if you do the ceiling or the walls first. You can just, if, you, if, you, if you're not going to drop it all down the walls, what difference does it make? You know, that's, my dad used to want me to put the ceilings on first when I was training because he didn't want brand new walls to have big blocks of plaster all over them but if you don't drop any then it doesn't really matter does it you know so you, you know just take your time and get neat at doing what you're doing and you can do it any way you want now we nice to have a spot board but limited amount of room in here so we're just gonna take it out of the bucket look oh, the same um, technique i always use as well great if you beginner Stay out the angle, yeah? Take a little bit, go into the angle. That way you don't get it all over the walls because you're not going in with a trowel fully loaded up. 
Yeah. Go in neat. Take a little bit. Go in neat. Take a little bit. See? If you sort of like it like that and go right into the angle, chances are you'll get it a little bit blob of it dropped down the wall. So just start a little bit away. Ideally, when you're pulling the sides of the ceiling, you want to reach halfway so that you've only got to do two passes, one down one side, one down the other side. I'm not reaching halfway because uh, I'm just being lazy. So <laughs> I haven't got a big ceiling on, it doesn't really matter. I'm just using a little bit less on my trowel. Um, just because I want to spend a bit of time going round the light nice and neat rather than just sort of lashing it in as fast as I can. Not under pressure on this job. So. Just making sure the artex is completely covered. There's no white sort of showing through. And as well, I'm not worried about getting it dead neat at this point. If I was if I was using a different, see I'm going to use a certain technique for plastering over the ceiling which involves flattening it in between coats. So I'm not worried about getting the, the first coat on super neat. I mean I'm not leaving, purposely leaving it messy but I'm not spending too much time getting every little line, you know, like that. I normally wouldn't leave it like that but for this, um, that'd, be, that'd be fine. We'll get the speed skim in a minute so that'll be... Something a bit different. Right, that's it now. First coat on. It's not the neatest, but we're going to use the speed skin now, so um, something a little bit different for you. Um, other thing, I've got a little bit of stuff left over in the bucket. Uh, not a lot, just a bit, because when we hit it with the speed skin, if there is any major sort of imperfections, any hollows in the ceiling, That'll highlight it so we can fill them out. Um, oh, little tip for you. Go and get yourself um, an inspection lamp, um, 200 watt bulb, because when you turn up to a customer's house and they've got their little 40 watt light bulb, it's like lighting a candle and you're trying to plaster the ceiling. You can put your 200 watt bulb in there and flipping light the place up, you know. Just don't do what we did and leave it in the last house so now we haven't got it and we're back down to the little 60 watt flipping bulb and we have to get the lights off the van instead. So this is our new speed skin. <coughs> the last one we won't talk about because Kieran gets a bit sensitive about it trying to say it wasn't him that broke it but we all know the truth. This one's a bit smaller. The last one I had was a bit wider, um, which I think was better, but it doesn't make that much of a difference. But this will be easier to sort of get round if we're doing, you know, sometimes trying to get in between spotlights and stuff uh, can be a bit of a pain. So I, I opted to go a little bit smaller. Won't make much difference in terms of getting over the ceiling, but it will make it a bit easier to get round, you know, some of the obstacles that you have to get over. So we go both ways with the speed skim as well. Oh, another little tip. If you get one of them dodgy poles that's flipping rattling round, then just literally pull it off the bottom of it and just use the metal bit. It wrecks the pole, but that's very solid to hold on to. So this is quite a good one, because it's like a hexagon shape in here. So it keeps it solid, stops it swinging round, but sometimes they're just swinging round. And whilst we're talking about little tips, another little tip for you. Someone was asking me about this in the comments of one of the other videos. How do you stop this thing sliding up and down? This little thing that grabs hold of the speed skin. Now mine's worn as well. My one of these is knackered. This little thing just flaps around in the wind now. It doesn't actually hold anything still. So what you can do is if your speed skin sliding up and down with this, 
this isn't that's probably what they recommend doing, but it works. Put a little drywall screw in there and tighten that up just by screwing that in there. It doesn't break it, but it clamps that on tight. Mine will not move now, and the only way I can get that back out is to loosen that screw off. And just watch you don't stab yourself. Put the screw face in the back so it doesn't stick into nothing either. But that that works. I mean, it's a little bodge, but it keeps it solid. So. What we're going to do is go this way first and then we're going to go the other way. Um, sort of cross trowel it straight away with the speed skim. And we're just looking for any big hollows, not little ones, you know. It's going to get another coat this. There we go now, go the other way. So you can see, after going over the whole ceiling, hardly any's come off because I've let the stuff pick up a little bit. Now I wanted to just show you, I, I was hoping there was going to be bigger bumps in the ceiling to sort of highlight this, but if you look here, there's a bit of a sort of hollow where the speed skin wasn't touching it here. And there's another one over here, in this area. Uh, so, put that against the, spin it, look, when you, when you put this against the wall, Spin it round so this is facing away so you don't get plaster all over the walls. If you put it that way, and that's loaded up plastic, it'll go all over the place, so just be careful with that as well. Now, the two little bits of hollows that we've got. And that's it now. What I'm going to do now is let that go right off. Not set, not going to change his colour, but till it's, I mean, it's still, still sticking to my fingers, it's still wet. I'm going to let that go really, really firm. And I only ever do this on Artex ceilings. <clears throat> Normal walls, I wouldn't have even bothered with the speed skin. I would have put it on neater and I'd be second coating it now. But Artex ceilings, this is how I do it to stop the pattern bleeding through. Right, so it's been about... Uh, oh, a little bit of me had to touch the ceiling when I was putting it on. <laughs> Get that out now. Um, it's been about 20 minutes. This now, I'll see if I can show you. Still, you know, let me spin the camera around with it. Dee -dee, don't know how to do this. Right. I can still sort of leave, you know, it's not, but it's firm, you know, I can press into it and it's, it is very, very firm now, you know. Um, and that's it, that's, you don't want it to completely set, but you want it to really go off quite a bit. Nice and flat now, none of the Artex is really showing through. So 
this it now, second coat going on. Fresh stuff, we washed out, we washed the whisk off, we washed the little bucket out for the first coat, because obviously, because we left that for, you know, 20 minutes, half hour or so, it'd all be going off of water. So this is brand new stuff now. Uh, we've put accelerator in this as well, but only because it's such a small ceiling, you know, we just don't want to be um, messing around with this for like three hours for the size of it. So we put a half a sachet in, a half a bucket. Now, you'll notice as well, I struggle to get loads on my trowel without it coming over the back edge, you see, so I can only sort of get shorter strokes and that's because my trowel's only four inches wide, so I'm limited to the amount of gear I can get on it. But that's just because the thinner trowel um, puts a little bit less pressure on my wrist. Um, a couple of years back, I started getting real bad wrist pain from having a stupidly big trowel for so many years when I was younger. Um, so now I'm using this and sort of um, fixing myself, you know, giving me all my joints time to rest without having to have much pressure on them every day because it's quite a repetitive sort of um, job plastering. Um, it's nice just to give the body a little break from time to time. So. If you can get by some jobs with a small trowel, I'd recommend it. Give you give your joints a rest, you know. Stop putting as much pressure on yourself every single day. Uh, maybe try out of one that's uh, a bit thinner. Imagine when, it, when you're pressing like that, if that was wider, there's more sort of leverage that you've got to press on. So a bit shorter of a trowel, it's only 14 inches and it's a bit thinner. So it does, does make it a lot easier on the arm. second coating it's not not super neat you know and i'm not trying to get it on really neat just getting it covered just getting it on now when you're going over the background has already been flattened in and it's already gone off a bit putting this second coat was lovely it's like skimming over plasterboards now rather than struggling over artex it's the, it's the reason i always do it this way it just makes it a pleasure to do it I actually look forward to skimming over our tech ceilings because I know how nice it is to second coat them and, and sort of pile them up when you do it like this. Whereas years ago, before I sort of twigged onto this way of doing it, you know, every our tech ceiling was a bit of a ball lake. Um, but you, you, you pick these things up, you know, over the years by trial and error. And then, um, yeah. In fact, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how I learned this method. Years ago, when I was in my 20s, I put an Artex seal on, and I thought I had enough plaster. I thought I had enough stuff. <clears throat> so I put it all on. Anyway, I used all the plaster I had for the first coat, and I ran out, and there was no one there apart from me. So I had to go and get more plaster. So what I did was, I thought, oh, flip your neck. I'll get it as flat as I possibly can. And then I'll come back and just try and catch it, you know, before it goes off. So, what, rather than the builder's yard, come back, add it as flat as I could, put the second coat up, and I started trying up, and it was lovely. I was like, wow, I've been doing it the same ever since. So now, second coat's on, I'm going to give it another little hit now with a speed skim. And remember, this is flexible. And you know my thoughts on flexible stuff for trying to get things flat, it's almost impossible. But it does make it a lot nicer. So I'm going to hit it with the speed skim now, and then it will still get three hits with the trowel and a polish. So this doesn't replace a step, it's just an extra step. It doesn't take off one of the trowels that I'm going to do. I don't replace troweling up with hitting at the speed skim. This is an extra thing, but it just makes life a little bit easier. Again, I'll go two ways. I'll go from the window wall back this way, and then I'll go that way. So it's sort of in like cross trials, you know, with the speed skim. Um, again, it's just going to highlight any little hollows, any any decent sized hollows. It'll 
show them where they are. There won't be any of this now because we already got them with the first coat. But Also a little point that I didn't mention, um, slacking off your ceiling rows, just slack them screws off a little bit. Be careful, there's live wires, but you can just plaster in neat behind it then, and then tighten it back up when you're finished. So that's it, and then from that point forward, you carry on with the ceiling, just like you would over a plasterboard ceiling. You flatten it in with your trowel, you give it two wet trowels, and you give it a nice dry polish. And that's it. The ceiling will be an absolute pleasure to trowel up. That's it now. We just we just trowel up as usual after you see me flatten it in. I give it um I give it a flatten with a trowel and then I give it um two wet trowels <clears throat> and then a polish, just finish polishing, and then we just go around the edges and you just literally don't dig into the ceiling, but just put the toe of the trowel there into the wall and just come along gently like this. Right round, like that, all the way, and then just wipe off any plaster off the walls. See, like up here in the corner, if you can see this. Not, not this side. See this? We're, we're going to be patching this back in because there was a crack along here, so we're going to blend this back in here. But see, the like this plaster up here. You know, just, just get it all off. There you go, like that. So. So it's all nice and neat around the edges, you know. And that's basically it. We're gonna patch it above that door as well. We're doing all the door heads. So did you catch the main points? The main points, the main part of this video that I wanted to get across to you was the time in between the first coat and the second coat. That is what makes the crucial difference in making Artex a pleasure to skim over and it being a nightmare to skim over. We all know what it's like when it's sliding round and the Artex is poking through and it's it's all rippling and you, the Artex is bleeding through because your plaster's on thick in places and thin in other places where the Artex is up and down, you know. The main point is to let it go right off, but you can't let it go off of lines in it, so that's why I use the speed skim. So you want your first coat on thick, you want to cover all the Artex. Then you want to hit it with the speed skim. If you haven't got a speed skim, don't worry. You can just use your trowel. It's just a bit more work for you. But you're going to flatten it off and then you're going to leave it. You're going to leave it longer than you've ever imagined you're going to leave plaster before because it's going to, you're going to feel like you're losing it, but you won't. As long as it's flat and there's no big lines in it, it'll be fine. Now, you don't want it to start changing colour. You're not going to leave it that it's set, you know, you just want it to really be like it's too far gone to trowel up, you know. And where you'd normally have a cup of tea, have three cups of tea. Once it's gone right in, then when you second coat it, it's going to be a pleasure. Now I like to hit it at the speed skim again, um, not to replace troweling up as an extra step, just to make it nicer. You can't ever use a flexible tool to replace a, you know, a solid steel tool. So it's not a case of I'm gonna speed skim it and then I only have to trowel it twice. I use the speed skim, it's an extra step, but it just makes it nicer for you to do. You don't have to do that part if you don't want to, but I would speed skim it in between trowels. Am I making this more complicated than what it has to be? Probably am. First coat it, speed skim, leave it, leave it, leave it, wait, wait a little bit longer. Second coat it, flatten it in, and trial it up as normal, okay? Golden. Guys, if you've enjoyed that and you appreciate the advice and you want to buy me a pint, there's a link in the description. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you. But there's no obligation. So if you've enjoyed this video, I do want you to like it. I do want you to like the <laughs> press that boop that little like button. Right? I'm trying to I'm trying to flip and get me videos to beat YouTube's algorithm, so I'd appreciate that. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. If you want to give me your tips and advice or share your advice, put them in the comments. Appreciate it all. Whatever you choose to do, though, thanks for watching.